The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Please pray the psalm by half verse, dividing at the asterisk. The heavens declare the glory of God. One day tells its tale to another. Although they have no words or language, their sound has gone out into all lands. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The statues of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold. By them also is your servant enlightened. Who can tell how often he offends? Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be bold and sound, and innocent of great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer.
a reading from the letter of Paul to the Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and this discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is, where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ has the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their table. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken, the gospel of the Lord. I'd like to share with you this reflection, particularly on the second lesson for today from 1 Corinthians, um, highlighting particularly Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God, verse uh, 24. And this is taken from the word among us. The words roll off our tongue so easily. Of course, Jesus is God's wisdom and power. He's the Son of God, after all. But what do these words mean? Today's readings can help us. First, there's Jesus as the wisdom of God. The story of the Ten Commandments in the first reading today, and also that we did at the beginning of the liturgy, shows us that God's commands are nothing more and nothing less than a revelation of his own divine wisdom. They reveal how God wants his children to live by loving God and one another. This is the wisdom that Jesus lived out perfectly. In everything he said and did, He showed us what it is is like to love God completely and to pour ourselves out in love for the people around us. And nowhere is this revealed more powerfully than when he laid down his life on the cross. As for Jesus being the power of God, what could be more astounding than his promise in today's gospel to rebuild the 
temple of his body after three days. Imagine the kind of power it took for Jesus' crucified, lifeless flesh to come back to life. Imagine the power that transformed his body into something radiant and glorious. That was a work that only God, by God's own mighty power, could do. These are not just historical facts. The power and wisdom of God are present today. And they are ours in Christ. Every act of love, forgiveness, and generosity that we perform demonstrates God's wisdom to a world lost in folly. Every time we pray in confident intercession, <clears throat> every time we rely on God's grace to say no to temptation, and every time we lay down our lives to care for someone, we are revealing the power of God. That's right. We can be God's revelation to this world. Jesus Fill us with your wisdom and your power so that we can share those gifts, your wisdom and power, with everyone around us. I thought this was kind of the best summation of the three lessons and the psalm today. And just want to add to this that every time we gather for worship, particularly when we gather for the Eucharist, we are gathered around the proclamation of the wisdom of God through the word of God. And today, with the Ten Commandments and what Paul has to say in the second lesson today about Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God is just a reminder to you and me of how that wisdom is expressed to us. And also then in the gospel, when Jesus is speaking of what it is that basically he is here to do, which is to honor and glorify and fulfill the will of God the Father, he does it by an expression of power, but isn't a kind of power that hurts, but it is a power that challenges, it is a power that corrects, and it's a power that invites change, conversion, a different way of looking at God, at life, at the world, that we live in and our place in it. And I say that because we are privileged when we gather here that the power of God is revealed to us particularly in his forgiveness of our sins. The proclamation of which I give to you every time I pronounce absolution. But it's the reminder, it puts words to the reality of what God is doing out of the love that he has for us as the living members of Christ's body. And then that is underscored, sealed as it were, by the power that is shown by the gift of the Holy Eucharist, as Christ gives us himself, gives us his body, gives us his blood, so that we are reminded that we are part of his body by virtue of our baptism, and that we are part of that body that has already been glorified, that we have died with Christ and risen with Christ in baptism, so that the power of God revealed to us in the gift of himself in Holy Communion reminds us of that, that we are already 
sharers, partakers of His nature, partakers of His victory over the power of sin and suffering and death. And what's not to rejoice in and be glad about, even in the midst of this Lenten season, as we admit the, more and more the truth about ourselves, that this merciful, compassionate, forgiving, generous God continues to share His wisdom with us, continues to manifest His power to us. And then, as the reflection says, that we are then called to be ourselves a revelation of that wisdom and power, not by doing any kind of weird kinds of stuff, but by the love that we share, the forgiveness that we extend, the generosity that we practice, the compassion that we manifest, all of those things are continuing revelation to the world that it says in the, re in the reflection, the folly that goes on in the world, the hatred, the division, the selfishness, the, the uh, just unbridled kind of living by our own instincts and not ever thinking about why were we created in the first place? Why did God make you and me? Why did he make human beings in his image and likeness? Why did God continue to work with the human race after the original sin? Why did he promise a Messiah? Why did he promise that he would always be with us? because he knew that we needed him to be with us. And even though there are plenty of people on the face of this earth who either do not know who God is or who do know and reject what the Lord has to say, we are still those who are called to bear witness, to proclaim by our lives, our words, our actions both the wisdom of God and the power of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. How much more can God do for us than he's already done and yet continues to do because of his great love for us and for the world that we live in and that we are his instruments in bringing that hope that we hopefully are experiencing ourselves. As the, also as a reminder to people that sin and death and suffering ultimately don't have the last word. 